Quest 3. I am so excited to open this. You don't even understand how long I've waited and all the shit I've been through to try and get this to my kitchen counter. I'm not gonna say anything else. I'm just gonna open it. Andy York is slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! This thing is <laughs> the box is so small that is my first thing is it's it's smaller than the quest 2 that is apparent the quest 2 was like maybe twice or three times the width of this maybe the same height but the width it was wider so they've gone for more compact packaging which is really really cool it's pretty simple it's just quest 3 on the front with you know the, the gigabyte storage the name We've got nothing on this side, and we've got what it comes with. We've got the MetaQuest logo on the top, and some legal jargon on the bottom. So let's just crack this thing open. And it should just slide right out. It's so compact, I, I didn't expect it to be this compact. Right, okay, let's start with the control. Oh my, these are really nice. So the first obvious thing is that the tracking ring is gone. And I mean, yeah, that has given such a more ergonomic feel to the controller itself. I can definitely see myself enjoying these a whole lot. And I mean, they're about the same weight, but they feel a little bit more sturdy than the ones with the tracking rings from the Quest 2. I'm assuming we're doing the pull tab. Jeez, that is gorgeous. This is a really, really compact and very pretty headset design it it feels it does feel more compact it doesn't feel like a brick in my hands like the quest 2 did this thing look at those pancake lenses should do some asmr oh look at those lenses look at how reflective they are we're just gonna set this aside for a second and take a look at the rest of the box. It's quite a hefty box actually. So we've got this pull tab. Oh. Charred, yes, charging cable. So we've got a UK plug. We've got a USB-C to USB-C. Some health and safety stuff. Nobody wants those. Yeah, that's the entire box. The way I'm gonna structure this review, I think, is I'm gonna play test it for a few days, work out all of what it's about, and then I'm gonna come back to you and I'm gonna give my full in-depth and honest review of what I think about the device. And then I'm gonna compare it to the Quest 2 and see what's changed. Because looking at it now, it looks completely different to the Quest 2 and it feels, it feels more premium than the Quest 2 did. And that's just my out of the box opinion, is it feels pristine and premium. And I'm not too sure if that's just because it's brand new, but um, we'll see. I'll see you in a few days. After just over a week with this thing, it's safe to say that it's so much better. I don't think I'll be going back to the Quest 2. And I think the best way to show you how good it is is just to compare it to the Quest 2. So let's just do this the old fashioned way. Pros and cons list. <laughs> I don't think there's anything more frustrating than a Quest 2 controller battery cover. I hate these things so much. You're just constantly pushing and ripping and trying to find out how to f*** 
open this thing. I'm so glad Meta decided to listen to us, because with the Quest 3, it's just a button. Yes, you heard that right. A button. Yay! I know we've just jumped from battery covers to graphics, but I really think this deserves to be talked about first and foremost. I did the only logical thing any human being would do, and pushed it to its limits on the first day by downloading Red Martha 2. This floor blew me away. The fact that their reflections are so realistic and clouded and oh, it's just perfect. Seeing the reflection and scratches on the glasses for the first time in VR absolutely blew my mind. And that leads me swiftly on to the third pro. Pancake lenses have changed my life. This kills about three birds with one stone, but there's less lens fogging and the field of view is absolutely perfect. Paired with the IPD adjustment wheel, you can get so immersed into this headset because of these lenses. It's crazy. Mixed reality is the feature that Meta has pushed the most, so it only makes sense for it to be absolutely pristine. Now, even though it is far from perfect, it has come leaps and bounds from the Quest 2. Integrating this feature into games and different experiences, I think this is the feature that I have played around with the most. I do just walk around my house with this thing on whilst playing YouTube, doing chores and different things like that. Because I have such good visibility, now don't get me wrong, you're not going to see perfect 2020 vision with this thing on. It is a grainier, slower version of real life, but that lag isn't that bad. I've had clear conversations with family members whilst watching YouTube just because of the mixed reality pass through. This was one of the main reasons I wanted to get a Quest 3 in the first place, was because of this mixed reality. Now the second obvious thing, other than the tracking rings being gone, is the fact that it's so slim. This is the Quest 2. It's the brick we all know and love that we've played and played for hours. And this is the Quest 3. It's a hair short than half of the Quest 2. This was made possible because of weight distribution, adding to the comfort. The audio is probably on par with the Quest 2, but it is a bit more crisper and a bit clearer and a lot more immersive. About the same can be said for the microphone. It is a lot clearer. It's not got a lot of that background noise and crackle that you hear with the Quest 2. Now, this one is quite controversial, but personally, I prefer the Quest 3 face padding. I know quite a lot of people have said that it's irritating on their skin and that it's just not the best. But to be honest, I'd take this over the Quest 2 padding any day. This stuff gathers hair, dirt and sweat like nobody's business it's made out of this weird memory foam that causes rashing and just it everything sticks to it the first con definitely has to be the head strap with the quest 2 it gave me a headache and it made the back of my head numb for some reason and it's safe to say the quest 3 is exactly the same it's also way harder to adjust Meta stock head straps are just garbage. I'll definitely be upgrading to something similar to the Bova VR or just some other alternative head strap because this is really, really bad. As a glasses wearer, I hate contacts. They freak me out. So knowing that there was a glasses interface built into the headset blew my mind. But it's just so sh Like, look at that flimsy plastic piece of sh wiggle. I'm sorry, it wasn't even attached. Now, even though it hasn't given me any trouble yet, I just think it's really flimsy. Meta, you can do better. <laughs> that round. Now, I don't know if this is just me being really picky, but when I picked this up and put it on, for the first few days, I did notice like a line between my eyes. I never noticed this with the Quest 2, so I was worried that I would continuously keep seeing it and that it would ruin my experience. Eventually your brain just forgets it's there, and with a little bit of IPD adjustment, it can be fixed. It definitely did annoy me though the first few days, so just a heads up. This thing is expensive. With this being £470 and about $599, this thing's going to break the bank. What's the first thing you do when you buy a new console? Buy games. So obviously it's more than a little bit scary when your almost £500 headset doesn't let you buy any games. 
This has been happening since way back when the first Quest headset came out. So it's safe to say when it happened to me, I sh myself. I was frantic looking all over the internet, all over Reddit, all over different chat rooms, trying to figure out what was wrong. It became pretty clear to me that a lot of other people had been experiencing the same thing I was going through. What fixed it for me was I was using my debit card to pay for games and I just switched to PayPal. That was it. I just switched to PayPal and it worked. So don't panic if you buy a headset and it, it somehow doesn't work. Just change your payment method and that should work. So there are some things that aren't pros and aren't cons. They're just kind of in the middle. So I'm just going to list them as things to consider. Now, the first thing I have seen on like bad things about the Quest 3, top 10 worst things about the Quest 3, but I don't really think it's that much of a deal breaker. Of course, I'm talking about the battery life. Now, I'm not a hardcore gamer and don't do like two, three, four hour sessions just gaming. So for me, the battery life wasn't actually that bad. I can see how it can be bad for influencers, YouTubers and things like that. But for me as a general consumer, I don't think it's it's too harsh. I play for about an hour tops and a two hour charge for about an hour and a half, two hours of gameplay time is plenty for me. But if you are somebody that does play for three hours at a time, just keep in mind that for two hours worth of charging time, you do only get about two hours worth of playing time. This next thing, I thought it was only me, and then when my brother gave the headset a try, he found it out too. Of course, we're talking about what I like to call the wedding ring. The wedding ring is a certain muscle memory where you drop the controllers and catch the tracking rings with your thumb, leaving your hands free to grab things and type and just do whatever. But you can't do it with a Quest 3 because there are no tracking rings! Basically making my playthrough look like this. Let me know in the comments if you experienced the wedding ring. Despite everything in this video, I think this is one of the best purchases I have ever made. I love it to pieces and I would recommend anybody that had the money to just go out and get one. Now, there are millions and millions and millions of videos and forums out there telling you how good the specs are, the graphics and all that stuff. But this video is not that. This is just a video from one normal person to another normal person on how great this headset is. And if you are interested in all of those things, there are thousands of videos you can go watch, and I do recommend you go and watch them. But if you did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe and comment down below what you'd like to see next. And I'll see you in the next one.